What you are seeing would have been impossible without the inventive genius of a dedicated pioneer. With imagination, capability, and hard work, Isaac Singer made a dream come true. He turned sewing into a machining operation by simply moving the eye to the point of the needle. In the machine tool field, too, there have been noteworthy achievements. The most recent is a new approach. Just as Singer moved the eye of the needle and gave birth to a new industry, the men of Monarch moved a turret, bedways and all, from horizontal to upright position, thus opening fabulous new possibilities for greater metal turning productivity. The Monarch Series 220 NCC. This machine tool is a new concept in numerical controlled chucking lathes. Its machining capabilities are limited only by the imagination and ability of the programmer, who has virtually unlimited tooling possibilities. For example, a front running tool, which is optional equipment, is ideal for removing excess metal on faces and outer diameters. Also, there is an optional rear tool for facing, forming, and grooving. Both slides operate simultaneously with the tape control turret, which is the heart of the machine. Imaginative placement and infinitely variable multi-axis operation elevates the 220 NCC to a higher production plateau than the automatic turret chuckers. A maximum of six tools in the turret are capable of multiple pass turning, boring, facing, ID boring, ID and OD grooving, both ID and OD contouring, as well as drilling, threading, and reaming, all under full tape control. Although this machine was first introduced at the Machine Tool Show in the fall of 1965, it has been operation tested on thousands of jobs in factories around the country. The best way to explain and illustrate the use and function of the turret is to actually machine a rotating housing for a torque converter. Material is 290 Brunel gray iron. Immediately and under tape control, all tool stations, front, rear, and turret, start bringing the casting down to size by taking off excess metal. This is maximum productivity. Parts are made at the same rapid pace, hour after hour. Constant operator attention is unnecessary. This is the fastest numerically controlled chucking lathe available today. One turret tool often is utilized for a number of different cuts. After a cut, the tape tells it to rapid traverse for another cut on a different diameter. Then the turret indexes to another tool for the next operation. All tools are standard insert type. This means quick, inexpensive replacement of inserts. With a tool setting gauge, Broken tools can be changed in a few minutes. The new tool picks up where the old left off. Finish cuts are usually so fine that grinding is often unnecessary. Now here's a real money saver for this 220 user. Formerly the most difficult part of this housing was the machining of an inner convex curve. A secondary handling was required for this one operation. This added time consuming unproductive transportation of parts as well as extra loading and unloading. Now it's all done on the Series 220. A standard insert type tool automatically breezes in to rough out the contour. Now that you're seeing it, can you honestly think of any better or faster way to do this job? To complete roughing out the ID contour, the turret indexes on tape Q to an opposite hand tool. Wall thickness and concentricity of rotating housings must be held on all parts. This is now possible, as these housings are completely machined in one setup, instead of in four different machines. Formerly, a six spindle automatic, a tracer lathe, and two late model turret lathes took seven and a half times as long as the 220 to set up. In addition, the four machines required about twice as long to machine each housing. Using a cutaway of the housing just machined and speeding up the action enables us to watch a number of the operations and to see the complexity of the cuts. 
This is a roughing profiling cut. It will be finished later. The same tool traverses for a facing cut. Then the turret indexes to another tool for some step diameters. The same tool contours a radius, then traverses for a quick chamfer. Next, the turret indexes to rough out the back half of the concave surface. Another tool roughs out the front half. Then immediately traverses to finish the front half. All movements are controlled by tape. There is no chance of scrapping parts or concern for tool clearance. The final operation is indexing to the tool that finishes the back half of the concave surface. A combination of unusual design features and quality construction makes the 220 unique among machine tools in use today. This is the completed housing. Notice how evenly the cuts blend in the concave surface. Surely you can see similar possibilities for cost-saving production on your parts. Two 220s are in operation at Fisher Governor's newest plant in Marshalltown, Iowa. They face each other, so one operator can load and unload each chucker with minimum effort. Both of these machines are kept busy on a wide variety of work, some of it difficult concave and convex surfaces. Mr. James Boyd, Vice President Manufacturing explains Fisher's reasons for purchasing two machines. Fisher Government Company is essentially a manufacturer of automatic control equipment. Uh, we build many kinds of control valves. The control valve business is uh, to quite a large degree a turning business. And we therefore through all of our history have used lathes in great quantities. We have some 35,000 parts in our inventory. We therefore will have many, many setups and a wide variety of parts. And uh, we think that we have a good application for the 220 NC machines on this work with a minimum of setup time, uh, a maximum repeatability with the high accuracy of the tape machines, and uh, all in all, a tool that will serve a very essential part in our manufacturing effort. The material in most of Fisher Governor's parts is tough to machine. Many jobs now programmed for the 220s were run on automatic turret lathes, but they were short to intermediate lot runs, and the lengthy setup time with the automatics made their use prohibitive with 220s in the shop. Also note that these particular forgings are the general everyday garden variety. They don't have those hard to machine contours, but careful cost accounting on 220NC chuckers clearly justifies the procurement for these parts alone. Are any of these configurations similar to jobs in your plant? If Fisher Governor figures investment in two 220s would pay off for them, it should for you also. Westinghouse Air Brake Company, Pneumatic Equipment Division, manufacturer of the famous line of Wabco air compressors, rock drills, air hammers, and other pneumatic construction and oil field products, have found their 220NC chucker very profitable. They are programming more and more jobs for this machine. The part now being run is an alloy steel forging. It will soon be a spacer for the Wabco rock drill. The part is turned in two operations. Before the Series 220 was installed in the factory, these spacers were machined in four operations requiring automatic chuckers and a tracer lathe. Every effort was made to simplify tooling in the automatics, but the best they were able to do was reduced to four tools in the first operation and three tools in the second operation. Still, setup time for this short-run job was a killing manufacturing expense. Now that the part is programmed for the 220, Westinghouse has reduced the production cost of this item and many others down to where they are really competitive. The first operation on the spacers just machined is drilling and rough turning the diameters on both sides of the ears. Then the turret machines the front face of the ears, one diameter, the chamfer, and the end of the part. 
two more diameters are rough bored, and there is a finished pass over two diameters and two chamfers. In this second operation, the 220 completely profiles the opposite end of the part, forms two grooves, generates the radius, and forms the grind relief to complete the turning. Note the evenness and surface finish of the contoured end. It is machining work like this that endears the 220 to profit-minded men. Here's another customer's job, a swivel joint of Monell metal. Both ends are identical. All work is with the turret. No auxiliary slides are used. Setup time is a mere 34 and one half minutes. Here are the cycle elements. Tool number one first roughs the face and makes a chamfer. Then a second cut with the same tool but at a slower feed finishes the operation. Tool number two rough bores three IDs in three separate cuts. Then tool number three rough bores two ball grooves. These are multiple cuts with the tool feeding both toward the headstock then away from it. Coolant is piped into the turret and is available through any of the tools. Tool number four, finish bores two inner diameters and two chamfers. Tool number five, finish bores the two ball grooves. There are ten machining operations in all, yet the total basic time required for all of them is less than ten minutes. Tool life is increased as a result of controlled cutting speeds and feeds on all diameters. This piece of 8 inch diameter bar stock is economically roughed out to this shape with one tool. Then the turret automatically indexes to the roughing tool which brings the part down to size. There's a final pass on the thread diameter. Then the difficult contour. Threading capability is optional equipment. However, users are finding that it opens up new avenues for machining possibilities. Threading passes are programmed right into the tape. There is no hesitation, no delay. It cuts threads of any constant lead up to two inches along either the longitudinal axis, the face, or on taper. There is no time-consuming transfer to other machines. This eliminates additional routing, handling, and setup. Threads can be cut at any feed speed up to 150 inches per minute and any spindle speed up to 1190 RPM. Either right or left hand threads can be cut. For those who like to reassure themselves of threading accuracy, a programmer can incorporate a checking mode. This gives the operator the chance to check the pitch diameter. With the offset adjustments, an operator can bring the thread down to half a thousandth of correct size on the final pass. Let's see some of these operations again in speed it up action. A roughing tool cleans up the stem end, sizes the small diameter, forms the thread relief, forms contour and shoulders, removes excess metal and forms back of well, forms the diagonal face, a second tool cleans up the back face and finishes the undercut. Indexes to finish tool and machines the piece to required size and surface condition. Finish is usually so fine it eliminates a grinding operation. This large diameter casting for the end of a generator housing illustrates the range of the series 220. In this setup, the insert replaceable bits are the same, but the holders are offset, which enables the 220 to machine larger parts. Programming and setup is as quick as with our standard tool holders. Boring, turning, facing, grooving, threading, contouring are all performed with the offset tool holders. The turret tools you see here will turn a family of housings. They will machine a wide range of sizes and workpieces. Some refer to it as universal tooling. As you can see, it's as easy to turn the large as well as the small diameters and to bore. Rapid traverse from outer to inner limits and back again is only a matter of seconds. 
the range of work possible with offset holders stretches from the tiny to large castings such as these. Gear blanks are further proof of the productivity of the 220 chucker. These examples all run on the 220 are typical. Although each lot is different in size and shape, the blanks fall into the same family classification. To make a new tape and change over the machine for a new gear in the same family is only 20 minutes. This gear blank takes three times as long to set up on an automatic turret lathe as it does on the 220. Here's another example. Starting from scratch, it takes 145 minutes to set up an automatic for this gear, as against 72 minutes for the 220. Note dimensions and tolerances. Here's another. It requires just straight boring, turning, facing, and chamfer cuts. Yet the automatic takes 278 minutes to set up for the job, compared to only 92 minutes for the 220. In addition to the savings in setup time, there are equal savings in machining times, too. On this gear blank, over five minutes are saved machining each one on the 220. With just 12 in the lot, over an hour is saved in turning alone. And on this simple job, the 220NC machines two blanks for every one turned out on the automatic. Adding the savings in machining times to the savings in setup times are factual arguments in favor of the series 220. More and more machining jobs are going to the 220, like this large bearing race. Top slide, front slide, and turret tools were used simultaneously. And this Timken chrome molly vanadium piston used in diesel engines is a 220 job. A 63 RMS finish had to be held on tapers and contours to eliminate an inside grind. Just as Isaac Singer opened up vast new opportunities with machine sewing by moving the eye of the needle, the tape-operated 220, with its turret in the upright position, is proving on job after job, on short runs or long runs, on difficult contours or simple diameters, that this new breed of machine tool is the most advanced, most complete chucking system in the world.